This episode is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your Raspberry Pi with our all-in-one arcade kit using genuine Sanwa arcade parts. And OneClickPrint.com for your photos on canvas, acrylic, gifts and more. Local craftsmen and global delivery. Hello cave dwellers and welcome back for a bit of fun today. You'll recall that Ravi Abbott recently visited us with his retro DJ setup, and here it is. It comprised of two Amiga 1200s and some very special software by developers Akira or Akira and Hoffman called PT1210. Well it seems our little rave in the cave provoked some interest because shortly after release this message was posted by those developers. The software, originally released in 2014, is now back in development, owing to the interest that you guys have shown in it, which is great news for DJs and those who like to use it. I am definitely not a DJ, but it's never too late to learn a new skill, right? And I want to do my part in helping to make PT1210 more accessible to anyone else out there who wants to have a go, but doesn't have a shelf full of Amigas to do it with. I also wanted to reduce the size of the setup to make it ultra portable and take to friends and share the fun with them, or of course the super clubs when I'm hired as a superstar DJ in Ibiza. We all know that's going to happen. So how do we take a setup which arrived in the cave in a bag like this and was tearing Ravi's arm off after a four hour train journey to something that will fit in a bag that looks like this? See, we've got the Commodore logo on there, just like Ravi's. <laughs> well, I'm about to show you my solution. We'll go through the hardware setup and a short tutorial in setting up the software. And by the end of it, you'll be calling yourself Fat Agnes Slim. Oh dear. Let's take a look then. And as we work through it, you can also point and laugh at me trying to mix. I'm mostly failing, but by the end of it, I'm determined to mix two songs together. Let's see if we can achieve that. And here's what I came up with then, it's my tiny retro DJ setup, made up of current parts anyone can go out and buy today. Each side of the setup is made up of identical parts with a mixer in the middle to mix the sound between them, sending that audio off to an amplifier and speakers which are hidden under the table, as well as my headphones. From the bottom of the picture to the top we've got a keyboard, nothing special about that other than it's small and it plugs into a USB port. If you want to cut down on cables you could go with a wireless model I guess. Ravi's Amiga 1200s are replaced by these tiny representations of them, and I'm sure you've guessed what they are by now, it's a Raspberry Pi inside there. These cool cases are sold by RetroPieCases.com. We've seen these on the channel before and I really love them, I think they give the Pi a lot more character than the regular cases. The Pi itself hasn't been modified in any way, it's fresh out of the box, and the ribbon cable that you can see there is going to the monitor. You can use an HDMI monitor if you want, just as easily, I just happen to have these ones on the shelf and they're nice and small. The monitors originally came from ModMyPi.com, where you can find a whole range of other monitors to choose from, but these ones are model 899-7466 and you'll find a parts list in the video description of everything that I'm using here. If you wanted to further reduce the footprint of this setup, you can actually mount the Pi on the rear of these monitors, leaving only the mixer on the table. But I'm afraid I'm a sucker for those tiny Amiga cases. The mixer is the smallest I could find. I picked it up secondhand for £20 with a missing equaliser button, although that button does work just fine. They usually retail for around £85, and it's called the Pocket Mixer, that's Pocket with two Ks. It lets us mix the audio obviously, adjust the low, mid and high range of each device and sends audio down to my headphones which is essential for mixing, or so the experts tell me. The knob on the front adjusts the headphone volume and the button above that switches between which device is output into the headphones. It's a nice little mixer, at least for my amateur needs here. And that is essentially it. A micro USB power supply is used for the screens and the Pies. And then there's a whole load of 3.5mm audio cables to connect it all together. Again, there's a full shopping list in the description of the video. So have we achieved our first goal of shrinking Ravi's setup? Here's his setup again, and while I'm pretty envious of that lovely blue Amiga 1200 case he's got there, I think we've hit our goal. It's certainly a lot smaller on the table now. But that's only half the battle. To make it work we need to install the software. So let's take a look at how we set up the Raspberry Pis to run PT1210. Here 
If anything, I'm getting worse at this. So we'll put our Pi's micro USB card into a card reader on the PC, and we'll start by downloading Amibian from the official site. Amibian is based on UAE for ARM. If you've ever emulated an Amiga, you'll have used UAE, so once set up it should be familiar. We download the image file for Amibian, and also Win32 Disk Imager, which is used to write it to your SD card. So we'll get those files downloaded, and then we run that Win32 Disk Imager program, and in doing so, most importantly, you need to select the drive letter of the SD card and triple check it. If you choose the wrong device, you're going to overwrite it and lose any data on it, so please be extra careful. Browse to your downloaded Amibium image file, and select it, and then hit write. It took about three minutes for me to write over a USB 3 connection. It may vary for you. When that's finished, your card is ready and can be removed. We next need our USB memory stick, so put that into the PC, and we'll download some more software. PT1210 has its own homepage, so we'll have to visit that to download the ADF file. We'll be running PT1210 from a virtual floppy disk, and we'll talk later about the advantages of a full virtual hard disk setup. But this will get us started, so download the ADF file. Finally, we need those Amiga Kickstart files, and the legal way to download them is from Cloanto. Their Amiga Forever product contains the legal distribution of ROM files. You may already have a copy of them or have acquired them elsewhere. So we copy these onto the USB stick. You should then have the Kickstart ROMs and the PT1210 file on the stick like so. And if that's what yours looks like, then we're ready to return to the Pi for the final part of the setup. Returning to the Pi, we plug the SD card in and the USB memory stick, and then we turn it on. If all has gone well, you'll see the Amibium splash screen while it boots up, and this is customizable, so you can put your DJ name on the screen if you so wish. Eventually, UAE appears. Now we'll come back to UAE, but first we need to quit it and perform some other tasks. So we hit quit to come to a command line, and then we press 4 to open the file management tool Midnight Commander. This is a useful tool to copy files from the USB stick onto the SD card. On the left, we'll browse to Media and USB to see the contents of our USB stick. Then press Tab on the keyboard to switch sides. On the right, we'll browse to Amibium, Amiga Files, and then the Kickstarts folder. We'll then highlight all of the Kickstart files on the left by holding Shift and using the arrow keys to highlight them and then we press F5 to copy them all across from the USB on the left to the SD card on the right. It's not the most intuitive interface, but it doesn't take long to get comfortable with it. Then we'll do the same to copy the PT1210 floppy file into the Amibium, Amiga files, and then the floppies folder. Once that's complete, our USB stick can be removed, we don't need that anymore. We'll then quit Midnight Commander and press 6 for settings. Here we can connect to Wi-Fi and other useful things, but I'm just going to type audio jack and hit enter. This forces all audio to come out of the 3.5mm audio jack rather than sending it over the HDMI output. If you're using an HDMI monitor, we want all of our audio to come out of that jack. Type menu to return to the main menu and hit 3 to go back into UAE. And now we can configure our Amiga. We're going to mimic Ravi's setup today by choosing a basic A1200 model Amiga, and then we'll put the PT1210 floppy in the drive, which of course we saved in the floppies folder so we can just browse there to find it. In the sound menu we have options to reduce the stereo separation. On the real Amiga, Ravi used a Y cable to achieve a mono output from the Amiga and avoid separation. We can reduce that in the settings here, or simply set it to mono, and things will sound a lot better. As we're using a floppy file, we'll slide the speed up to 800% to make the loading quicker. Also be aware of the options here to set up a hard disk file, onto which you can install Workbench, PT1210 and all your mod files. You'll soon want to do that, but it's beyond the scope of today's video, we're just looking at a floppy disk version today. Our Amiga is now configured, and we're going to save the setup as config1. It's important that you don't change the name there on the screen. And here's why. We then quit back out of UAE. We hit 7 for the emulator setup. We type emulator config, and then we type UAE conf1. 
and that sets the config1 file we saved as the auto booting configuration. Every time we turn the Pi on it will boot to that configuration file which is what we want. There's one final change which is to uncheck the show GUI on startup and with that done we can reboot. Our Pi then shows the splash screen. It goes directly into Amiga emulation using the settings in our config1 file and PT1210 appears on the screen without a single button press. This Pi will now go straight into PT1210 every time it's powered on. Yes, a small celebration for me there because I actually managed to mix one song into another. Yeah, baby steps. I've only got to mix 20 back to back, right? And then I can call myself a DJ. Best of all, from that setup, it all managed to fit into the tiny bag as I hoped it would so I can easily transport it around. If any of you guys are going to try this setup yourself, I hope it's proved useful for you. If anything's unclear, just leave a comment below and I'll be happy to help you out where I can. There's just one small step if you want to take it to the next level, as I mentioned, which is to create that hard disk file, install Workbench, and then it opens up more options for you. And hopefully, uh, if more of you guys get involved and show more interest in PT1210, the next version will come out soon, and subsequent versions from Akira and Hoffman, and we get lots and lots of more features in the software. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. So do check out their Facebook page and their homepage. You can find all the links in the description below. Also check out the 8bitmix.com, which is Ravi's page where he does a monthly mix using the PT1210. Also Akira, one of the developers, um, has a YouTube channel called Kicking Core, and there are some incredible mixes on there, so do check that out. All the links below in the description. I hope today's video has been useful to you. If you do come up with your own DJ setup using it, tweet me a picture or email me a picture. I'd love to see what you come up with. As always, thank you for watching. Take care and... Uh, Happy DJing. Good luck.